Hi guys, in this video I will show you how to project a curve onto the surface of a nerve's object. We're going to be using this in our next exercise in class. So how do you do this? First you need to define the nerve's uh, surface that you want to project onto. So just for the example I'm going to use a sphere and I'm going to increase the size of that sphere substantially so we actually see what we're doing. And what I want to do is, I'm going to turn off the grid, by the way. And right here, what I want to do is project a curve that then I can use to actually attach some kind of geometry to the surface of that nerve's object. So for doing that, what I want to do is I want to create a curve. And I'm going to do that in the front viewport. Over here, I am going to use my EP curve tool to create a line that goes from here to here. And so to do that, Basically, let me just go ahead and hit return, and that creates a line that's going across my sphere. So I want to bring that out a little bit. Let me bring that out just slightly to the front so that I can actually, that you guys can see that it's actually a line that's laying in front of my sphere, as you can see in the front viewport. So with that done, what I want to do is I want to select the sphere, shift select the curve, and then I want to go to surfaces, and I want to go to project curve onto surface. Now, when I do that, when I go back to my perspective viewport, you will notice that a curve has been attached to the surface of my sphere. It looks a little iffy because, as you know, anything that is created, I, I only define two points for the original curve. And so the, even if I had defined more points, it wouldn't have given me any more points that it already gave me. That's one. The second thing is, remember, just like with polygons, these curves are created in a non-smooth version. So if I, with that curve selected that I just projected onto the object, I press 3, I should see a nice curve all around my object. So I have smoothed it out. Um, notice that my gizmo changes with that curve that was projected onto the object, and that's because that line, it's almost as if it was drawn onto the surface, which is very similar to the previous video that you just watched, where we talk about how to draw curves onto a surface by making that surface a live object. So basically, that's what we have done. So if I move this gizmo, it allows me to move the curve on the surface, but it doesn't look, let me move it away from the surface, as you can see. Basically, I am constrained to both the U and the V values of the surface. UV refer to the mapping around the object, and we're going to talk about that when we talk about materials. But, but think of them as the X and Y values of the, if this was a piece of paper, if I was to spread it out, Basically, the U and V re represent the X and Y values that I have for that object because I don't. if I spread this as a piece of paper on a table, it would be completely flat, so I wouldn't have any depth attached to it. Remember that this object, just like with anything else that we do with curves, as long as I have history attached, the original will control that surface. Let me turn off my snap in here. You'll see that that the original curve, the line that I created in the front, is controlling how the curve looks onto the projected surface here. So that's how we project a curve. Now, why, what is this useful for? Think of this as an isoparm, an isoparm that allows me to do any kind of operations on that surface. One of those operations is to detach that curve from the object. We did that when we were talking about um, extracting curves from nerves and that's exactly what this is going to be the operation we're going to extract the curve from this nerves object that's the curve that we want to extract so with that curve that we projected selected let me go to curves and i want to go ahead and say duplicate surface curves when i do that a new curve is created and you can see that it's also patchy like the previous one so in order for you to better see that what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the projected curve the one that we had a second ago, this blue one. So I'm going to select it, and I'm going to hide it by pressing the H key on the keyboard. So now that I hit that one, that was the projected curve, let me select the one that I just created, which was uh, extracted from that original projected curve. So this one has been extracted, and this one is not attached to the object, as you can see. It's not attached to this object, but it is attached to the other curve to the one that we had that controlled it, which is attached to the original curve. So if I were to move this up and down, my ext my extracted curve, this one will move along with it because this one is controlling the original projected one. 
Now the extracted one, as you can see, is also really patchy, and that's because it's in, in low poly count, let's call it that. So if I select it and I press three, I get a very smooth curve. With that done, what I wanna do is I wanna go to my top viewport here, and I'm gonna create, I'm gonna make this X-ray. So let's go ahead and so that I can see the next operation. I wanna go ahead and select a circle, and that circle appears in the center of the world. Let me go ahead and scale this down quite a bit. And what I want to do is I want to bring it closer to the point where that curve is. So let's take a look on the on this viewport, on the per perspective viewport, and that's pretty close right there. So let's just bring it. Doesn't have to be on top, by the way. I just like doing that so that I have a point of reference. So if I'm going to place that curve close enough to where that extracted curve is. You can snap if you want to. That's also a good idea to do. So with that uh, circle selected, I'm going to shift select the extracted curve, the one that's going around the sphere, and then I'm going to surfaces, and I'm going to extrude options. So with extrude options, what I want to do is I want to have what I've had in the past. I want to say tube, add path, closes endpoint, profile normal. That, those are the settings that I'm working with. I'll go ahead and extrude. And you'll notice that this created a circle, a, a tube up here all the way up in outer space, as you can see, it's basically way further than where the path is. So that's where we need to start changing the settings. We go to, for example, um, use component pivot. And usually when I change that to component pivot right away, it will bring it right back down to where it's supposed to be, where I expected it to be, which is right here. So now that tube is following the path that was going around the sphere. But as you can see, that tube came in with very little definition. As a matter of fact, if I have that tube selected and I click on its attributes, I can see fairly fast. Let me see if I can do that. There you go. I only have eight spans on this, on the, on the settings for that tube, which is very little. That's why it looks so iffy. I can try pressing three to see if it smooths it out anymore, but it's not. So what I want to do at this point is I want to reconstruct that tube. So to reconstruct that tube, I will go to Surfaces, Rebuild, Options. And it is over here that I define how I want to reconstruct the geometry of this. I want it to be uniform, which we did when we were doing the um, creating the curves, uh, making sure that we attach curves and making sure that we have even spacing between the spans. Then I want to make sure that I have U and V selected for parameter range, direction, sorry. And then I want to make sure that I have at least, let's say, 32. I can make 18, for example. I'm going to go with a high number. We're 32 for the U spans. That's what I want to do. And U spans are the ones that are going around the, this sphere. So when I click on this, make sure that it's cubic as well so that it's smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and click Rebuild. And you'll notice that my tube now looks really smooth. And it hugs that sphere really well. Just like with everything else, this tube is still attached to the circle that created it, this nerve circle. So if I select the circle and I scale it down, I can fine tune the width of that tube. That's one way to do it. Another thing that is still attached by history is all of that geometry is attached to the original line that we projected onto the sphere. So if I move that, all the geometry should move and slide on the sphere because there's still history attached to all this. Now, once you get it to be at the, uh, at the shape and position that you need it to be, I strongly suggest that you delete history because all of that starts adding up and then eventually your um, scene will have so much data saved in it that it's going to slow down your processes. So my advice is that you delete history when you get to a happy place.